player 2 has joined the game. Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to episode 79 of the Two Player Co-op Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts here, Kevin, along with my brother from my mother, Sean. How are we doing? Very good. Happy Father's Day. We're recording this Sunday night. Very late Sunday night. Uh, we just watched Money in the Bank pay- pay-per-view. That was disappointing. That was interesting. Uh, Baron Corbin is your Money in the Bank winner. I was right. I wish I wasn't. Um, not much else to say about the paper. The match was really good, actually. The Money in the a good Bank match. It's a horrible ending. <sighs> You've got Shinsuke and AJ going head-to-head. And then it's the just... The crowd going nuts. And then, hey, let's just bring let's in Baron, give it to Baron Corbin and just let him win it. Yeah, that's that's what the people want to see. It's not what's best for business. Um, before we get into anything, uh, it's a sad day here on the podcast. R.I.P. to Link, his hand, um, and part of the Master Sword, um, a certain red-headed child of mine, sweet child of mine, Whoa, whoa. I'm not going to sing it. Sweet His name might be mine. Noah. He might have um, cut off Link's hand, and I don't know where it is. I wonder if we can give him a red arm like this. <laughs> Venom Link. I don't think it works, but I like that Venom Snake's doing the wolf pack. So I don't know. Link may never make another appearance because I don't know where the hand is. Hopefully it's here somewhere, but RIP Link. You will you will be missed. We love you. Uh, also, shout out to Jess for the new T-shirt. I didn't have a Mario T-shirt. I needed a Mario T-shirt. I got a Mario T-shirt. Shout out to Jess. Thank you so much. So you got a Mario T-shirt. I feel like I got to move her here a little bit. That's a little bit better. Um, busy week for us. We put up two podcasts last week. Uh, go check them out. Episode 77 and episode 78 recapping E3 stuff. We didn't do one for the Nintendo Direct because it was only about 25 minutes, but there's a lot to talk about for that and that's going to be the majority of what we're going to talk about on the podcast here so make sure you stick around check that out if you want to see our thoughts on all the other e3 stuff go back check out episode 77 episode 78 they come before episode 79 which is what this is closing in on 400 subs uh it's important to say this at the beginning if you like what you see here make sure you hit the like button and make sure you hit the subscribe button push us over 400 subs really appreciate it we want to hit that before we go on the air next week for episode 80 we're getting close we're very close also, uh, if you got some time to kill and you weren't with us on Friday night, we did a uh, impromptu best of 75 uh, ultra super duper street fighter to the final challengers uh, tournament. I guess, not really a tournament. There's just two of us, but um, thing. Um, so check that out. We had a lot of fun. It was a especially thing. this guy. Yeah. Because I won. It actually went. We went. All the way to episode, episode uh, match 74 before we got to, what, 30, 38 wins. Yeah. Uh, it took a while. It was worth it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so go check that out as well. And that game is awesome. I just got to say. It's great. Street Fighter 2 is Street Fighter 2, but this is the best. I can now say this is the best version of Street oh, yeah. Fighter 2 it's that's beautiful. ever been made. Uh, I love it so much. It's so much fun. Um, kind of lost my mojo online a little bit, but I did win, win five in a row yesterday. Felt better about that. That's pretty good. So I'm getting back. But I'm I'm 12, 13 hours into that game. I'm probably going to end up putting 20 or 30 hours into that stupid game. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, gosh. Uh, love it so much. But, yeah. Um, I think that's all the housekeeping. Um, I do believe so. I do believe so. Sean, you started Life is Strange. I did. What are your thoughts? Um. It's one of those games so far that... So I like it. First of all, have you played it? I didn't get a chance to start it yet, no. I like it, but... But my only issue... No, stay with me. Part of me is a little bit worried because it sort of reminds me, stay with me, of why I didn't like part of why I didn't like no, the Witcher that <laughs> stay with me. It seems like there is just so much stuff to do and really? so many things to interact with. So it's not like a telltale game. 
where it's very no you like, walk around focused oh. yeah you walk around and it's like oh you can read this notebook you can talk to this person you can take a picture of this you can do this you can do that and then you can rewind it all and do it all again but not do different things and see what that and it just seems like it just hurts oh, my brain to I think about, about that the millions and millions and millions of had to, had to. possibilities i don't know it's just it's a game that if i could just enjoy it for what it is i'd probably like it but it's going to be tough for me i think to play through that game and not always be wondering well but what crap, if let's rewind maybe what if i didn't waste time reading that or what if i didn't talk to that person would this interaction have been different and i feel like it's just going to drive me nuts so do you think is this not a game where you can just i'm just going to play like are you compelled it can be i'm gonna have an issue with doing that but i think i'm gonna have to or else i'm never gonna get through it um i also don't really maybe you know even though you haven't played i don't understand the format there's like episodes. So I don't know when this game originally came out, if it was released kind of it like was, Telltale. It was, yeah. But it's all one story. Right. Okay. I didn't know if I was it's like, I was doing model. this thing for episode one and then episode two is going to be something totally different. Love this table. Love this table. Um, I like it. It's a really cool format. It just seems so overwhelming because I want to, I don't want to miss anything and I don't want to, it's not like I feel like, playing horizon that we'll talk about here in a second where I'm not going to get the platinum and that's not going to bother me. Uh, Even though it might change your mind. Well, I know, but I feel like I could play horizon and not do every single thing and be fine with it. Right. But something about like this game and even the Witcher, a game I didn't really care about. It just seemed like it was almost too much. And my decision was just, I just don't want to play the game because there's just too much. And I don't know. Is it like The Witcher where you see all the stuff that you can interact with, or do you have to like get close to it? To some extent. Okay. They Yeah, they kind of highlight it from... You don't need to like get right up to it. Um, I mean, you mentioned Gone Home. It's almost similar to that, and I forgot how it was until I watched Brittany play through it. How you can literally pick up like every object, and 90% of them do nothing. Oh, I can pick up this box of tissues. It does nothing. I can look at it. There's nothing to see. I can throw it, but I'm compelled to pick up every single one because who know knows when I'm going to pick one up when and the find like a key under yeah. it or whatever. So I don't know. I like it. It's interesting, but I think I need to just, part of me just wants to just power through it and just be like, screw it. I'm just going to do what my gut instinct says. And there will probably be parts, I'm guessing from what I've seen so far, where the game will kind of either prompt you to go back and fix something or force you to. And so maybe I just do that, but Hmm. I don't want to power through it and miss too much, but I think I'm going to have to, or else it just seems too overwhelming to me, but it is fun. I do enjoy it. It starts out with a bang. It's, I mean, it's, it's definitely got Logan about the way it starts. It starts. Yeah, (laughs) it's good. Um, and so I've been playing that, and then I've been playing some Horizon. I feel like this game, nothing really has changed in the game, I think. I think I've just played it enough now to where I feel like it's finally hitting its stride. I'm getting the combat. Yeah. I'm getting, you know, upgrading stuff, and it's all kind of coming together. Um, I just got my second tall neck okay. down in, like, some, like, canyon, <coughs> the Copper Fields or David Copperfield. I don't remember what it was called. Copper copper canyon copper something i don't know it's kind of in the bottom left so i got through the first like big mission where you end up getting through the the what do you call it the oh. j- j- the what's the other tribe you go through their gate because you have to like do all this stuff yes. and then you finally get through like oh, the God. snowy pass whatever so i went through and i started making my way towards the next area and i see this giant i don't remember what it was called giant flying robot mm-hmm. and i'm like Hmm. You fought a thunderbird. I don't. This early? I don't think. It, or was it a glint hawk? How many flying things are there? Just two. There's the glint. Then hawk. it was a thunderbird. Okay. Because I fought a glint hawk and I beat it. This must have been the thunderbird, and I tried and I died. Yes. So then I like. All right. Well, let's go this way. Yeah. So I started taking this other oh, path. I know where. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. remember because that happened to me at that point too. Because it's like very. It's like <laughs> right there. It's like the path it wants you to take. There's a thunderbird. So I'm yeah. like. So I thought maybe I'll start fighting it and something will happen. I'll trigger a cutscene. I'm like, I'm there's no way I can be fighting this thing right now. And then no, it just killed me. 
So the next time I took kind of a, a detour and went a different way, and that's how I wound up at that other tall neck. And yep, I don't know. It's it's. I feel like it's finally hitting its stride, and I'm really liking it. Awesome. Um, that makes and the clock happy. is ticking because I only have what three weeks. Three weeks probably till Final Fantasy 12. So I need to beat it by then. Again, if you don't want to go for the plat, I don't, do I don't think all I'm that stuff. It. You can be. I'm it tempted in to do hours. like the side missions and stuff. Okay, but. The other thing is, all There's I have right now is... Okay, do you ever upgrade your spear? Okay. So, you, I'm torn because all I've bought... I bought a bow, and I bought an armor. And then I bought the the trip caster thing, whatever yep. that thing's called. That's it. I don't have any of the, like, slings or whatever, and I'm like... I never really used them. Okay, I don't know if that... It's another thing where I'm like, am I missing out on something? What you will want to get is the long-range bow. I, I, I don't remember if it's the war bow or what it's called. Karja, that's the name I was trying to yeah. think of. Um, Karja, yeah. I think I got the Karja sharpshooter bow or something like that. Oh, that's good. It's pretty good, yeah. It's, yes. It made a huge... Because now I feel like those. I can actually use it and kill him. Before, it was like, I'd see a little, like, a watcher, and I'd be like... Right yeah, in his yeah, eye, and it'd do like a third yeah. of its life. I'm like, what? this bow, like, why would I ever? That's why well, I was doing everything. Does, I think melee. it does have some drop on it. Maybe. So that's why I was doing so much melee. But now that I've got a bow that actually works, I feel like I can do some damage. But no, I, I'm i really liking it now. It's really coming together for me. It makes me happy. Yeah. Frozen Wilds is coming, the DLC expansion. I already pre ordered it. Right now it's $15 on PlayStation Network if you ever, if you are a US PS Plus member. So go ahead and pre order that. Not an ad because Sony's not going to pay us for an ad. Um, I'm, that makes me happy. I I don't feel compelled to go back into it with what it is because I've platinumed it, but I cannot wait for that DLC. Right. I cannot wait for that. And you also beat... I know you mentioned oh, it yeah, on the we podcast haven't even to talk about or something. It. Blaster um, Master. I beat Blaster Master Zero. That was a fun game. Um, they do have like a new game plus. I don't know what the... I don't think there's really much of a point to. I, I didn't love it so much to where I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to play through it again with more weapons. Yeah, but I might someday. But it was a good game for ten bucks. It was totally worth it. It was. I was pleasantly surprised. It was a lot of fun. Um, I, I basically hundred percented it. I got all the items, got all the power ups, went you know uncovered the whole map, did everything. Um. It was cool because it had a little bit of a... Did you ever play um, uh, Zero Mission? No. Metroid? I, and, uh, based on something we're going to talk about a little bit later, I really want to now. It, you definitely should. Yeah. Um, it had kind of a Zero Mission kind of ending, not really the ending where... I mean, it's not really spoiler alert, but when you think you're at the end of Zero Mission, you're not. And that's that kind of how, how Metroid this... one is? No. Okay. Because you basically you get to the end of Metroid One. You're like, hey, I beat it, and you haven't beaten it yet. Awesome. And that's kind of how this game was, where I thought I beat it, and then there's like a whole new section after that. So that was pretty cool. But that's what I, I think. Maybe I should get that on my 3ds because I'm not going to hook up the Wii U to download it and play it. Zero. Machine. I would. Yeah, I would. You need to play it. Yeah, it's very good. You can skip Fusion. Fusion's not great. Yeah. Um. But you should get zero mission for sure. I think I can. I think it's probably like six bucks or something. On it'd be nice if there was an eShop on the Switch and I could get it on that. That would be nice. Come on, Nintendo. I did not play Life is Strange. I've just I haven't played much. It was a really busy week here with work stuff and with with uh, friends visiting. So I didn't really play much video games at all. I played some Street Fighter two, um, but I did play some Axiom Verge. Thought I was stuck. Finally figured out how to get unstuck. Um, but before I got unstuck, I remembered the only part of Super Metroid that I absolutely hated. And any game that has this mechanic in it, I hate. I hate. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know if it's me or what. But grappling hooks suck in side scrollers. It's pouring again. Oh, that's what I hear. They suck. This, I got to the point where I got the grappling hook. I beat that one big boss. <laughs> big boss. And then I get to the point where I'm stuck, and I'm like, I, find, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I finally figured out, I'm like, well, wait, this map outside, let me try to, because then I went through like 
Eden or whatever the place is that's really long and there's just like head, two big heads and there's like no enemies and it's all green and it's just like I think it's just like a fast travel point where you can, you get can to ride each the, world. There's like a thing you can ride across. Oh, I didn't get I didn't see that. Maybe that's a different one. This no, is I just think that's one it. long. Maybe I just oh, I don't I know if you need, need something to, to something. make it work, but probably yeah. There's like a I think it's like a head or something. I've seen heads. You but like I didn't see anything stand on and then it. It oh. takes you through that really quick. Oh. Because, yeah, no. it's really long. It takes a while to just walk. Yeah. Through. But, yeah, there's like a thing that... I'll try that again next yeah. then. Um, but, yeah, so I finally was like, wait a minute. Because I see a power-up up here. One of the, like... Uh, I don't know if it was a power-up node or if it was a health node. Like one of five or one of six or whatever. I can't right. remember which it was. But I saw it and I was like, I can't jump to there, so I need to grapple. Grapple, fall, jump back up. And this is where you've got the big rock monsters that fart on you and stuff. And it's just, there's boulders everywhere and it's just really annoying. Grapple, fall, jump back up, 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 grapple, fall. So is it the grappling hook mechanic? Like you don't like the controls? It doesn't work Here's, right? Or, I don't like I think the controls. Of, what I think of was Super Metroid. I'm not a big fan of the grappling hook, but the worst part is the part where you need to grapple from here to here and it's like there's one block that you can grab yeah. and at one block it's this, tough to like get the aim right at but least with this, with this you can grapple anywhere right i don't like the fact first off something just happens in my mind when i jump i'm like am i supposed to jump and hold up and left and hit it or like and then like or do i just jump and hit circle i think i can just jump and hit circle. by default you go right. up and over where you're jumping that's an issue. The issue more for me is once I do hit it and I'm swinging and I'm like, I should be able to swing back and forth until I push X to jump off it. And you can't? No. It just jump. It just sometimes it's like, nee, wee, boom. And I'm like, I wasn't prepared for this. Hmm. It's extremely frustrating. <sighs> Nonetheless, I got through that finally. I got up to the next level. I, at this point, it was so long ago, I can't even remember what I got <laughs> up there. But it was something I needed to progress um, what was it? Maybe it was something with the little the the little drone guy. I don't know. I def I did get a drone power up at some point where you can shoot him further. Okay. But so I don't know. Um I, Luckily I got through that. I didn't die up there with all the fart rock monsters because there was no place to save up there, I don't think. So I got whatever I needed. I jumped back down, saved, and I said, I'm turning this off and I'm just gonna walk away for a while. Um so that's really all I've, other than Street Fighter 2, and there's nothing that I can touch on with Street Fighter 2. Yeah. All right, you want to get into the news of the week? Because we've got a whole lot. Let's get into it. All right, let's run through everything that happened at Nintendo's E3 show and Treehouse Live. Oh, boy, we have two full pages of stuff here. So let's get right into it. Rocket League is coming to the Switch. Holiday 2017. It will be cross-play with Xbox and PC. And PS4 will not be part of that. Because Sony wants to protect the integrity of their network, or some it was something like that. They got to protect their players or something. Really? Then why do you let Street Fighter V be cross-play with PC? Why don't you like Nintendo? Oh, I didn't Xbox? even know it was. Yeah. yeah. And there's a couple other games that are like Rocket League is like that. I think just not with Xbox. Like I get it, your competitors, but. This it's just well, yeah. Dumb. What is it accomplishing? It's Do just they really dumb. think people are gonna buy? Ooh, oh, my friend has a PS4. I'd really like to play against him in Rocket League, but all I have is an X bone. I guess I'll buy a PS4 so I can play against him. Right. What, what are they trying to accomplish? Right. Like I don't like it. It does nothing. I don't like it. I'm glad Rocket League's coming to Switch. That seems like a perfect, perfect Switch game for local multiplayer and and on the go and all that other stuff. So that's awesome. Xenoblade Chronicles Two got a new trailer. That actually looked really cool. I don't know enough about Xenoblade. I, I know nothing about it, but the trailer looked cool. I just can't do... I mean, granted, I haven't really given much any of them a fair shot. I just can't get into the whole JRPG thing. It's just... And... This looked like it was very action-heavy, though. It did, yeah, yeah. Not Because I'll never play a turn-based game. I'm just not going to. Sorry, guys. But when, unless I go all the way back to Super Nintendo. I'm going back 25 years now. I don't think of Nintendo as a system that I want to be playing RPGs on. I just don't... Like, all the weird secondary, like, Final Fantasy games we got, like, on GameCube, I think, like, 
Crystal Chronicle. I just have this weird association with Nintendo and RPGs to where they just don't seem to mix. It always seems like Nintendo just gets the B tier ones, and I'm just they were supposed I, to I get Final Fantasy VII, well, but then yeah. Square said, "Screw you guys." I just can't get into it. It does. It did look good. Um, I mean, I haven't just completely written it off, but I don't know. I'm not sold on it yet. It did look interesting though. It looked fun, but if if it's if it's really deep like RPG, I just I I don't have time. Especially here in a couple of weeks, I'm not gonna have any time. Right. Um. So it's I'll probably never play it, but it does look good. Then we got a couple of games. Well, we got a trailer for a game that I'm excited about. Oh yeah, Kirby in 2018. All it's called right now is Kirby. It looks beautiful. In the mo, it it's the best Kirby's ever looked. The little the tree guy from the first level and the first Kirby still. I think he's probably been in every 2D Kirby game. The he tree guy. Be. Um, I don't, so I, that really don't shoot me that me. I don't know his name. Because when I was watching that, I was watching it at work on lunch um, break. Uh, absolutely. On my, actually, I probably wasn't my lunch break. But the internet sucked, and it like, like kind of like when we were watching E3. Yeah. Thanks, Sony. And then by the time it came back on, I was in the middle of that Kirby one, probably towards the beginning of that. <clears throat> And at first, I thought it was Smash because I saw like multiplayer and I saw like these four right. life bars at the bottom and like all these. And I'm like, wait, what What am I watching? I'm like, is this Smash? Smash and then I noticed, Kirby's? wait, it's yeah. just a bunch of Kirby's. I'm like, oh, holy crap. This is. Then I heard the music. and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. this is this is Kirby. I like it. Um, to me, I've already uh, my mind's made up on that. I'm buying that. Yeah, it looks awesome. And that's one of the kids. You can't screw me. up 2D Kirby. No. Nope. I, I and the whole multiplayer thing would be cool because you can team up. It's like, like new Super Mario Brothers, it's new Kirby Brothers. Yeah, yeah, basically, looks fun. Can't wait. You can't go wrong with Kirby, like we said. Uh, then they talked about Pokemon. Uh, there is a core Pokemon RPG coming to the Switch. They said it is quote. It may be more than a year away. <laughs> Red, at least a year away. Yeah, that's not. It's like 2019. Sorry, guys. Um, maybe well. Maybe it's fall 18. I don't know. But apparently the whole Pokemon stars for the Switch was a complete rubbish rumor. Yes, I said rubbish. Then they damn near broke the internet without showing half a second of gameplay when they announced Metroid Prime 4. It's not being made by Retro. Does that worry you? The trilogy was so perfect to a lot of people. Retro made those games for some reason. They're not making this. I don't know why. I'm not going to pretend to know why. Does that concern you? I don't. It doesn't really concern me. I don't think. I don't think Nintendo, especially for a game that you know is going to have so much hype to it. I don't think Nintendo lets it be subpar. Nintendo's going to make sure this game is good. I don't care if it's retro or not. Um. Honestly, I don't remember a whole lot about Prime 2 and Prime 3. But I know I've played them both. I don't think I owned them. I think I owned 1 and 3. And I think okay. a buddy of mine in college owned 2. But I don't remember much about 2 and 3. And that should probably tell you something. 1 was awesome. 1 was 3D Metroid perfection. I think okay. I'd still take Super Metroid over it. Because I think Metroid should just be a two-person... Uh, 2, 2D. 2D, thank you. 2D game. Um, so I'm not too concerned with it not being retro. It, it's going to be fine. It's going to be more than fine. I think it's going to be great. I've never played any of the Prime games, not even for a second. I will get this just because I feel like I love the Switch so much. I feel like every major first-party game I'll end up getting just because. Right. Um, by the way, this guy won the three predictions show like a quarter of a point to zero. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we shot for the stars, stars and, and landed and amongst the sun. Marilyn Monroe. You miss all the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael, Michael Scott. Scott. Uh, the good thing though, is it is the same producer as the other prime games as the producer on this, not directing it, but same producer. So you've still got the same vision. There's, there's a tie back to the other ones. Yeah. They did say it is still going to be first person. So it's a core prime game, and they said it will be quote beyond 2017. No kidding, you have nothing yeah. to show. You probably had don't even have like a morph ball. Is that what it's called? Yes. Rendered yet? So, yeah, 
2019 is what I would guess. If this game, there's no way this game's coming next year. There's no way. They would have shown yeah. something. Yeah. But at least Reggie, Reggie didn't lie when he said they might be working on a couple Metroid games. We'll get that in a minute. Then they showed Yoshi. Do they give a name for this or do they just say Yoshi like they did Kirby? It looks like it's basically Yoshi's Woolly World 2 or right. whatever. Or Paper Yoshi almost. Yeah. So it's I think I, I feel like they just called it Yoshi, but I like the idea of this game that It basically you go, looks like Yo and I never played Yoshi Woolly World 1, whatever. Yeah. And so maybe this is exactly what that game was, but this game looked like Yoshi meets um God, what was the game? Little Big Planet. That's oh, what this looks yeah. like to me. But no, it that. looks... I, uh, I'm not sold on it. It looks fun. I'm not sold because... This looks the, like a game your boys would like. Like, I could see you getting this game, and maybe I don't, but maybe it ends up being really good. The but, main thing that doesn't sell me on this is the same thing that I... I still haven't eggs. played the game. Yeah, that that I that turned me off immediately to Super Mario World 2. What the... I don't like this whole throwing eggs thing. Like, I don't like... I don't mind it, but it was a huge part of that game if it was a little bit less like it feels like it, it looks to me like it wouldn't even be a platformer because i mean it, i mean a platformer but it's almost like what a traditional platform it's almost like what arkham knight did with the bat tank it's like this could be a cool oh, mechanic if it was like a small portion of the good. game it was too big of a portion of that game i think a lot of people love the game it's not a bad game but i wish the egg throwing was a little bit less of a thing yeah so, Journey's out. I mean, I just said every major first-party game I was going to get, I don't know about this one, so I, I take that back. We'll see what it ends up being. Then they showed Fire Emblem Warriors in, in the spirit of Dynasty Warriors, Hyrule Warriors. Now they're doing a game like that with Fire Emblem, so there's just a million people on screen, and you beat them all up with your swords and stuff, and you go from there. Then they talked about the Breath of the Wild DC. Uh, they DLC. DC Comics, Shadow Link, Buster Sword. Coming summer, June 30th. So they finally put a date on it. It's earlier wow. than I thought. I thought that that's like a week and that's a half. That's a week away, yeah. I thought that was going to be like July or <laughs> like August. August, yeah. So that's the issue is that's going to be, that's like two weeks before Final Fantasy. So but really, not, I have until June 30th to finish it. Well, see, running. that's the thing is there's not a lot to do with this other than the Trial of the Sword to try to just see if you can get through it and keep your master. But I, it's also going to draw me back in when I can see with where steps. on this giant map I haven't actually like, oh, been Oh, that's yet. where a shrine would be. You're like, that's wow, I haven't been be. to this entire area Yeah, here, that's so. going to be like, but it's also going to be overwhelming too. Like, oh my God, I didn't even yeah. know that was there. Oh, that's true. So they showed that. It looks like you get to keep your stamina and your hearts even though you start with no weapons. So that's cool. Because if you notice, yeah. that guy had like 18 hearts and he had three stamina wheels or something. So I'm like, well, that's that at least makes it a little bit fair. So you have a lot of life to work with before you can build up your weapons and stuff. So Right. And it looks like there's a lot of pop, uh, puzzle solving, too, because they showed like the fire part and the, the smoke or the steam's coming up. Obviously, you're going to float on that. And I don't know. It'll be fun. I'm, I'm definitely good. I still haven't bought the DS, DLC. I will. Um and then they did give a name to the holiday DLC and called it the Ballad of the Champions. No details <clears throat> other than are we going to play as all five, including Zelda champions? That seems I like think so. way. That seems like way too much for a DLC. If they're saying it, remember they had said it's one dungeon, but story content. I, if we play as Zelda, that'd be awesome. I think you. I think yeah. I think it's. A dungeon where you play a Zelda, but then you can also you switch to the other characters to like help. Ooh, GTA Five. Yeah, I think Zelda's the main playable character. There's one dungeon, and I think yeah, you probably switch between them to to help solve it or whatever. But yeah, I think it looks good. I've already bought them. You know, I bought it. Right. So, I mean, and no matter what. All the champions are getting their own amiibo because you can never have too many amiibo. Then they got to the main event, Super Mario Odyssey. I don't, I don't even know this game. I, I have some thoughts on this game. Um, they're probably different from some of you others. Let me see. I screenshotted something about this game. Let's see here. All right. So here was the press release for Nintendo talking about the game and everything in it. 
Join Mario, this is like the back of box challenge, on a massive globe-trotting 3D adventure and use his incredible new abilities to collect moons so you can power up your airship, the Odyssey, and rescue Princess Peach from Bowser's wedding plans. This sandbox-style 3D Mario adventure, the first since 1996 beloved Super Mario 64, I love how they call that beloved and then they just say, and 2002's GameCube classic Super Mario Slightly Sunshine, less beloved. Is packed with secrets and surprises, and with Mario's new moves like Cap Throw, Cap Jump, and Capture... I wish they would have put a dash Cap- there. Sure. Yeah. You'll have fun and exciting gameplay experiences unlike anything you've enjoyed in a Mario game before. Get ready to be whisked away to a strange and amazing places far from the Mushroom Kingdom. I don't know about that. And then here's some bullet points. Ex- explore huge 3D kingdoms filled with secrets and surprises, including costumes for Mario and lots of ways to interact with the diverse environments, such as cruising around them in vehicles that incorporate the HD rumble feature of the Joy-Con controller or exploring sections as Pixel Mario. That has me more excited than anything in this game. Yeah. Thanks to his new friend, Cappy. I love that that's the best name they could come up with. He's a Cap. Let's just call him Cappy. Cappy. Let's call him Hattie. No, Cappy. Yeah, book it. Thanks to his new friend, Cappy. Mario has brand new moves for you to master, like Cap Throw, Cap Jump, and Capture. I just, I don't like it just Cap Throw, Cap Jump, Cap. It should dash, sure. With Capture, Mario can take control of all sorts of things, including objects and enemies. Visit astonishing new locales like Skyscraper Pack New Donk City and run into familiar friends and foes as you try to save Princess Peach from Bowser's clutches and foil his dastardly wedding plans. How he is so dastardly. I just just need to say I'm 110% in on the name of New Donk Donk City. City. I love it. Um... I, I I wonder if he's going to do a wedding, kind of like the 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 wedding with Undertaker and Stephanie McMahon on the cross and <laughs> Stone Cold had it come. Well, they already did. That. I'm pretty sure this was in uh, Mario RPG. They yeah. had like a wedding part of it, and yeah. And then they just talk about the amiibo. So I don't care about that. So those are all the bullet points. Um. So yeah. So the hat lets you control and transform into things. You cannot capture every enemy, just specific ones. There are no more traditional power ups. Uh, there are the 2D sections. They call it Pixel Mario. That It looks awesome. I love seeing 8-bit Mario with the red and the blue instead of the brown and less yeah. brown. Yeah. This is so much better than this. Yes. And, and I say that as a freaking... I mean, I grew up on this guy here. If you're uh, listening on audio, you should go to youtube.com slash two-player co-op. Like, subscribe, share. The game is separated into worlds slash kingdoms. Each has power moons that you have to collect to progress... There are fast travel checkpoints, which is cool. That means these worlds are going to be huge. Yeah. There are no lives or one-ups. If you die, you lose your coins. So I guess you, as long as you've got coins, you come back to life. The shops, you can buy outfits. They are literally, it seems like they are just outfits. It's every, but it's like every single outfit he's ever worn. Yeah. But and there's like no power-ups associated with no, them, yeah, I don't yeah. think. You, can, you can buy play as Dr. Mario yeah. and... They did say you can buy items, too, which that's interesting. This has been in development for three and a half years. Development started right after 3D World. Sean, my immediate thoughts are this is the Breath of the Wild for Mario 3D games. Yep. I have some very big reservations about this. Maybe it's because I've never played the true 3D Mario games this just seems so different. Whereas Zelda, it was like, yeah, it was different. Zelda's always been about exploration. They've been going that way. I mean, they started open world and then they got focus and they've been branching out ever since. It seems like to get to where they are. I don't think you can climb. You can't climb everything in this also. No. kind of a shame, but I, I, I'm worried about the no traditional power ups. I'm worried about the whole cap. Like I, I'm sure all Nintendo games control, well, I shouldn't say all. For the most part, Nintendo ga- games control immaculately. Yeah. So I'm sure the cap thing will work out and everything will be fine. And everybody that's played this game, for the most part, is just like, that was just, that. like some people got to play it for an hour. They said that was an hour of just pure fun playing yeah. this game. I am probably just have my reservations because I, when it comes to Mario, I'm a 2D guy. What are your thoughts on this? I had some reservations. Okay. But they are gone. I can't wait for this game. I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's a step in the right direction. Like, it's still 3D Mario. I mean, it's 
Mario 64, it's galaxy, it's sunshine. It's not 3D world. It's the right kind of 3D Mario game. Without being so, like I read, it's not so go into this world and do this, you get this star, and then you're back out. And then you can go back in and, ooh, I want to try to get this star. It's like all... It's all, it's all pipes. pipes. It's there's, all continuous. It's like... And there's hidden stuff everywhere. I've heard, yeah, there's so much hidden stuff. Um, my rebuttal to what you just said, mm-hmm. think of when we heard in Breath of the Wild that there were not really many items and yeah. how different the, the weapons oh God. were. If you go like, back and listen to some of Everything is procure on podcasts, site and yeah. like that turned out... Okay. One of the best games ever made. Yeah. So I'm not really, I, I think I've learned my lesson there. It's definitely going to be different. Mm, I agree with you on the whole power up thing because Breath of the Wild worked because it was just Zelda made more realistic. This is Mario. It doesn't need to be realistic. It's, I don't like that. I mean, the, what I take away from that. You can't even throw fireballs in this game. Right. Now, maybe you can... But now you can... You, but your hat, in a way, but your hat... Right. You can, like, it's hold a projectile. it out in front of you. You can throw it in circles around you. So it's almost like... Right. I'm sure it'll all work out, and I'll play this game, like, a half hour in it and be like, this is awesome. I'm just curious what all... So obviously, if you take control of, like, a bullet bill, mm-hmm. or you can f- fly across this gap. What am I doing taking control of a Goomba? What's that going to accomplish for me? And maybe, I'm sure there's a reason for it, but it's like, why? Why would I do that? Now, if there's like hammer bros, hammer bros, boomerang bros, fireball bros that you can take over and then maybe you you can throw a fireball, you can throw a boomerang, you can throw a hammer, like... Okay, now they're at least kind of getting back to actual Mario games. There was one part in the trailer where he was like playing catch with a hammer bro, where he took one over and he was like throwing the hammer and they were like juggling them together or something. I was like, oh... I don't like the song. Um, I don't really. Okay. I mean, I heard it. it I don't like it at all. I think it's it's just maybe it's because it got stuck in my head. But I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, this is not a Mario game with like this jazz number going and everybody's just dancing around and we're going to hear <laughs> the song way too much now. Like, I don't I did not like the song. I'm in the vast, vast minority when it comes to that for sure. Yeah. But I did not like that song at all. I'm also shocked to put it lightly that this is coming out in october supposedly i mean that may not happen but no i think now when they i was pretty sure this was going to come out this year because i didn't think they'd screw that but i thought this would be like the rumor i had heard before that they said it was december it was no maybe november the the rumor that i heard was november 21st i mean here i'm not i saw it on twitter the rumor was November twenty first, a week right. before Black right before Friday. Black like, Friday. That that makes sense. Like that's when like Link Between Worlds I think was right before then. Mario three World might have been a November release also. I can't remember, uh, but that made sense. October it does make sense though. Get it out before the Call of Duties and the Battlefronts and the Death. Well, after Destiny and all that, whatever other November games there are, right? Get it out, and they're going up against Assassin's Creed, who Ubisoft is probably crapping their pants now because of that. I'm not. There's no way in hell I'll buy an Assassin's Creed game the same day this comes out. No. There's no way. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I can't remember. It, it's not important. But Mario is the best game coming out that day. Yeah. But no, I, I, I pretty much have no worries. I'm totally in. I think it looks awesome. At least with Zelda, and like I said, I've learned my lesson with Zelda. But I love Mario. But Zelda is like another level for me. So I'm very worried about them screwing up Zelda. So I was a little apprehensive. It turned out okay. Turned out okay. Mario, I think it's less of a uh, a leap from what they've done before. And again, I don't... I mean, we grew up with Mario, but I don't feel that connection to Mario because like I do with Zelda. Because it's just a fun platform. Exactly. It's not like... You're not invested in, is he going to save the princess or not? Right, like, yeah. He's going to save the princess. So, I don't know. It's... I think my worries for this game are less than they were with Zelda, and Zelda turned out fine, so I'm not worried at all about this. I think it's going to be awesome, and I can't wait, and I'm going to get it for my birthday, early birthday present. I was going to say, you're going to wait I'm gonna get it. I'm yeah. going to get it the day of, but I'll call it a birthday present. Uh, so then they also did the Treehouse Live, where it's right after E3, 
right, right after their Nintendo, whatever the hell. It wasn't a Nintendo Direct. A, the E3 Spotlight, that's what it was called. And they had two announcements from that that I'd like to talk about. The first one is Metroid Samus Returns. First, yes, I wish it was a Switch game. But they've made it clear they're not giving up on the 3DS yet. Yeah, they're that. I don't like that. I don't like it. I own one, but I don't like it. I don't like. I they said they're going to continue to create content for it well past 2018. I think was what they said. Like the 3DS. Not yet. Not well past 2017. Past 2018. See, I, which worries me because I think means when we get into oh. exactly, I don't like that. I don't like it one bit. But no, they. Well, I don't. I am very excited for this game. September 15th. It is a remake of Metroid 2. Now, I mean, of course, they were going to shut it down, but that fan remake AM2R that they were doing of Metroid 2 with Super Metroid Graphics, and they interviewed somebody, interviewed, I think it was Kotaku, reached out to them, and we're like, we're not mad. This is all, we're happy that they're doing this. It sucks that this they shut us down. Yeah. Obviously, they were going to shut down a Metroid game that's not a Nintendo game, but it looks fantastic. It's kind of like when they shut down the Metal Gear Solid 1 remake, and then they... I don't... Oh, I don't. Never mind. They didn't. It's yeah. not funny. Yeah, my predictions went great this year. I, I cannot believe they didn't announce a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. I cannot believe... We'll talk about that here in a second. Are you super excited for this game? And there's new Amiibo, too. There's a squishy... Uh, I saw. I want Metroid. That. that looks awesome. He's breaking out of the thing. Um, I'm very excited about this because I love me some 2D Metroid. My biggest concern... I've never played Metroid 2. I haven't either. But my understanding... and. Either it's not a big deal or they'll get rid of it. But my understanding is a big thing in this game, I think, I could be wrong, it did not play like Metroid 1. I mean, it kind of did, but there was some weird aspect where you had to, like, collect Metroids or something. Like, there was something weird where you had to... It wasn't just explore and get better and get better and get better until you can get to the end and beat it. It was like you had to find all the Metroids or something weird like that. They just didn't seem it's like it almost seems like castlevania where one nailed it and then two oh, let's try this that's yeah. not very good and then by the time three comes out okay we fixed it we're back to what's good so i've never had a <clears throat> huge desire to play to like i missed well, out on a metroid game and i never went back and played it and i'm okay with that mainly because it was a game boy game well and that's what a lot but, of people what i was reading after this was that this is fixing a lot of the gameplay things and also it's 2.5D graphics, which... And Metroid 2 is another one of those, I mean, because it's Game Boy, where if this is your screen, Samus was, like, this big. Like, yeah. It, it, so, yeah. It just didn't work. The, the And it was hard to tell. Like, I, I guess playing on that screen, sometimes you couldn't tell. Maybe that's what it was, because you had to collect Metroids. You couldn't tell Metroids from other bad guys and right. stuff, so you didn't know. It was... I think there was a great game underneath there, and apparently the story is very important to Super Metroid, and it kind of leads right into it. Yeah. Um... I, I, I'm so happy about this. They added a new gameplay. Oh, and I think the director, I think I heard the director of Super Metroid is directing this. Oh, so God. right there, you're like, well, okay. okay. Yeah. They add a new gameplay mechanic. It's like this, the, the melee knockback. Like yeah. If anybody gets too close, you knock them back, and then you... It, it, I can't wait. September 15th, right around the corner. I do wish it was on the Switch in full, beautiful HD, but it is what it is. I'm still going to play it. So, Logan, you're on the clock with Ocarina. Yep. You got three months. If you can't beat that, but game you'll, you'll be in like another month. Issues. Also, they announced Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. It is a GBA remake of the original Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Minion, the the Minion game. I guess it stars the Goombas, and it's almost as long as Saga. So you're getting two full basically games as part of this release. I don't care anything about this. Did you play Superstar Saga? I owned it. It was a great game. Um, is it an RPG? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, I mean, yeah, it's an RPG. Um, there are a lot, a lot of good games on the Game Boy Advance. But at least on my SP, I don't know if it's because something's wrong with it. I mean, I broke it in half and then super glued it back together. A couple times. But... When I went back and tried playing it, it's just, it's so hard to see anything. It's the way they And did. I don't know if it's the system. Maybe mine is just old and no, it's no, gone no. bad. Because I don't remember it looking like this before. It's but. the way you did. There's some, there was one game. And then I think the long, which one came out first? The flip one? The normal one. That, and one that one didn't first. even have backlighting. 
the oh, SP that's added the, one the backlighting. So You're right. But even with then the maybe backlighting, I feel like everything just looks washed out. Yeah, so it that may be, be a problem system. with my system because I don't remember this being an issue before. But like, I went back and tried to play Minish Cap, which I loved. Couldn't get into it. I went back and tried playing this really? game, which I loved. Couldn't get into it. It was just too... Because it didn't look... First like, of all, the things like this bit, you have yeah. like buttons. And I'm like, I can't. It's like playing it's with a joy ridiculous. Yeah. So there's a great game there. And it's going to be so much better on the 3DS. Again, I wish... You know what we need is the equivalent of Super Game Boy. We need like an adapter that you can plug into the Switch that you can then just plug 3DS games into it and play it on there. Now, granted, like, you only have one switch, one screen. But who cares? But, but for certain games like Link Between Worlds, you don't need the second screen. Just hit the pause menu and look at the yeah. map. Like I would love like to be able to just... Zelda game. I love my 3DS, but now that I have the Switch, I would love to be able to just put it into its case, tuck it away, and just be done with it. But now I'm going to... For another year and a half, probably, I'm going to have to keep buying games for like it Link to because the past. I'm not going to miss yeah. Metroid. I'm not going to miss Zelda, which inevitably they're going to put a 2D Zelda game on I still the hold 3DS. out hope for that because they said something about how that team was moving over to the Switch. So I still hope, but I don't know. Are they going to really do a full, maybe it'll be a $40 game. Now I'm rambling. I don't no. know. But no, I, I'm looking forward to that. I think I'm absolutely going to buy that. I don't really care too much about this Dominion thing. Like, hey, maybe it's fun, but... The regular game was was great. I yeah. loved it a lot. That was really it for the Treehouse Live announcements. Metroid stole the show. Oh, and by the way, I'm way more excited for Metroid Samus Returns than I am for Metroid Prime 4. <clears throat> I've never played a Metroid Prime game, and we didn't see anything about it. Maybe that's why, but I'm way more excited for I think if you played Metroid, Metroid Prime 1, I think you would love it. Really? I, yeah. That's, it's awesome. <clears throat> So this next section is just called E3 Fallout, not the game, but just some some more details about games that came out after the press conferences and stuff. We got some more details on Spider-Man. You do play as Peter Parker, so they really confused everybody by putting Miles Morales in at the end. If you watch our E3 recap for Sony, we thought Miles was Spider-Man. We thought that Spider-Man was gone and Miles was there, and that's why I was like, heh, heh, heh. no, he's but he's in the game, so we don't know why he's in the game. I don't know if maybe there are two Spider-Men in this game. Maybe towards the end, you that would be weird. Well, I'm no, curious. Because Miles doesn't take over until Peter dies. Spoiler alert. Well, that's what I was comments. wondering. I don't know. I yeah. didn't know if Peter died or if he just <clears throat> kind of no, handed yeah. the, you know. So I'm wondering, maybe that's in the game. Maybe you are playing by Miles, yeah. playing as Miles by the end. God, that would be really dark. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't seem to really fit no. the game, but why else would you put Miles in unless there's like a post credit scene? Like, right. Maybe they're obviously there, there's a reason. I don't think he's in there just as a cameo, especially yeah. if they took the time to show him in the E3 thing. You're playing as Miles by the At end some of this point, game. You have I think. to be, yeah. Whether they're going to kill off Peter first or I, I don't know. Maybe there's two time. Maybe you play. I don't know. But Miles isn't in this game if you aren't going to play as him. Yeah. But yeah. They did also say that there's a reason the suit looks the way it does, basically meaning the white spider. I don't know what that means, but it means something. It seems like uh, Greg Miller was saying it, it seems like people are hitting behind closed doors that you can kind of customize the suit, possibly. I don't know if that means you get new suits or you can change stuff on the suit. And I don't know if that means colors or I'm sure there's upgrades and stuff. There's going to be upgrade trees for the suit because I'm sure... Based on the fact that the eyes move, it's going to be like the the suit in Homecoming, I assume. And they did say, so I think they said Peter Parker is 23 in this. So it's it's not like Dark Knight Returns. He's not that old. But for but he's Peter out of Parker, high school. He's, he's out of college. He's very old compared <laughs> yeah. to when he he's starts old being Spider-Man. Spider-Man. So he's, he's a veteran at this point. And the story is going to be very focused on Peter Parker, the man also, not just Spider-Man. So that's interesting. Got a war. There are no escort missions, Sean, so you can put that fear to rest. They said the kid, you'll never, they, they actually said in an interview, you'll never like be fighting, and then you'll be like, oh no, and then the kid died, and it's game over. They okay. literally Thank took care God of your concern Lord. in the interview, so that was cool. That, yeah. Okay. You, do get, you do have a button that controls the kid, so that's why when he was climbing that time, you see the bad guy come out, and you're like, <laughs> that's you hit triangle or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's interesting. They were inspired by Labyrinth, a never-ending story, as they were building the world. Very interesting. Mm. And they did also say that the reason he doesn't have the Blades of Chaos slash Exile slash Athena are because they represent the past Kratos had left behind. And that was really cool. Reading that, as much as I love God of War, you just think of the the Blades as this awesome weapon. And you got the chain, you throw it, and you bring it back, and you do all this other stuff. 
but he has those chains bound to him because of what the gods did to him. That was part right, of his yeah. punishment. They were burned to his skin and everything, and he couldn't escape it. And that was one of the things that happens at the end of God, God of War 3. I mean, spoiler alert, really, I mean, it's seven years old. That he those chains fall off and everything as he's as he breaks free, so that was cool and and you you can tell Corey Barlog, he loves God of War so much, he loves Kratos, he's been there through the whole series, he's basically kind of like the Kojima of right. God of War, he cares so much about this and just to hear some of this stuff sounds so cool. He also did talk about after leading off of that that. When he when they wanted to leave those behind because that represents all the horrible stuff that ha- that he did and that happened to him, when they were talking about the axe and the the way you can use the axe, like like if you got a big guy coming at you, you can throw the axe up in the air over his head, call it back, and wham, it'll come and it'll stab him in the back and kill him, and then you call it back from there and stuff. Just like he made it sound like there's so many ways you can do that. Like all they've really shown is just ha ha ha, and you've seen him call it back a couple right, times, yeah. but. Not anything cool. It seems like you're going to have a lot of creativity there with with the combat, and I really, really like that. You know, one thing I really, really don't like, Sean? What's that? Metal Gear Survive. It's been delayed till 2018 because they really needed more time to polish this this piece of crap game that's just stealing. I mean, it's not stealing because it's theirs, but reusing all of Metal Gear Solid V's assets. Uh, Greg played it. He's like, I don't know. He basically summed up my thoughts. He's like, I don't know who this game is for because you've completely alienated every Metal Gear Solid fan out there that there is. Right. Anybody that cares about Metal Gear the way Metal Gear fans really care does not care anything about this game. He said, and it just it just felt like it had no soul. And he said he feels bad because the, the people that we're all really mad at are not the people making this game. They didn't fire Kojima. They didn't screw him over. It's the suits at Konami that we're so right. mad at. And you feel bad for these people that are putting a lot of time and effort and thought and love into making what they hope will be a good game. And he just said it's just not. He, the, the controls are kind of weird. It doesn't control just like Metal Gear Solid Five. Some of the stuff is better. A lot seems worse. Um, I, it's one of those games where I think we said this back at the beginning, like, yeah, if you just put out like a twenty dollar, co- they said it's basically just four player horde mode, where you're building a base to try to keep the zombies out and you kill them when they get in. Okay. Yeah, but apparently there's a quote. Let me see here. Dense single player experience. That just reeks of. Let's let's put some nice words to this to make it sound. No, there's this is a multiplayer game. I don't uh, want a single player experience. None of this makes me want to play this stupid game. Yeah. If, game demos don't exist that much anymore. If any game was in need of a demo to just try to be like, here, please, just, just give it. We a know, shot. we yeah. know. Just, just try it out. Just try it out. This is in need of it. I hope they put out a demo for it. I will. If they do that, I will play it for sure. Just to see the, just to experience it for myself. I'll say that. Right. I. They didn't even do a trailer for it. They just let the press play it. Like I said, there's no Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. I, I still say it's coming at some point. Maybe Tokyo Game Show. Maybe we'll do a prediction show for Tokyo Game Show. I, I think they're going to announce it. It's still... So it came out... Oh, gosh. It's not that... Yeah, it came out in 2004. So we're nowhere near the 15th anniversary. I don't want... By the time it comes out... <sighs> I mean, next year would already be 14 years. I mean, what's one more year? What was that Seinfeld episode? When they went to visit Jerry's parents, and he's like, well, I mean... I mean, the weekends always fly the Friday by. Friday, and, and you know, you wake up. sleeping, and, and showers, and it'll go by yeah, like that. Like that, yeah. Uh, one other quick tidbit. IO Interactive is... They announced that they are officially an independent studio, and they kept the rights to Hitman. That's awesome. Happy for those people. That means we're going to get more Hitman. They haven't announced it. They said more is coming this week as you're watching it. So if they've already announced it, I don't know what it is. What I do hope, though, and I hope the next Hitman game is just a Hitman game because the whole seasonal thing made me not want to do it. And now, is, and I've played every Hitman game there is except the first one because it was only on PC. And even now that it's all released, I'm like, it's just, it's, it's, I'm, I don't probably never going to go back and play it because there's new games like, Uncharted's coming. Sonic Mania is coming. Then mm. Mario is coming. 
You know, there's there's yeah. a lot, and I still want to go back and play Metal Gear Solid Five again. So I hope that the next one, I hope the next one is just here's Hitman. Don't do it episodic again. Just don't. Right. I, I, and I wonder what their sales were like for the game because it was a big experiment doing a game that's not like a Telltale style of game. Doing a full triple A big release game episodically. I, I just wonder how it went for them. Yeah, I, that's they went out on a limb there. But yeah, more updates are coming this week. Final Fantasy fifteen, the the next DLC got announced. It's episode prompto. Do you care? Nah. Okay. I should tell you all everything you need to know about that. I'm looking forward to it more than Final Fantasy fishing. I mean, <sighs> neither of which am I going to actually play, but... I don't get it. That I just... <clears throat> and one more note here. 60.4 million PlayStation 4s have now been sold. We've been assuming for a few months now that they were over 60 million. Well, it's actually 60 million 400,001... Because our boy Rasan finally shout out to Rasan. He finally took PS4 dip. Pro. He's playing. Even. Yeah, he's playing through Last of Us now. Uh, maybe we'll get him back on here. I would love to get his thoughts on the Last of Us. He's been out of video games for so long. Yeah. After since ever since he bricked his pre or actually since RJ bricked his PS3. Oh, at least it bricked. No, he bricked it. <laughs> he <laughs> he bricked his it. PS3. That is the news of the week. I feel like I don't even know how to do this anymore because it's been a while. But you know what time of the week it is, Sean? What time of the week is it, Kevin? Is that time of the week when we play the... <gasps> it's the back of the box challenge. challenge. We still nailed it. That was awesome. That was if you good. didn't know, the back of the box challenge is how we end the podcast here every week on the two-player co-op podcast. What this game is, is what we do is we look at a previously released retail version of a game. We look at the back of that retail box, and we read the back of that box aloud to the other player. Did it just sound like it said player? Player. <laughs> We will bleep out any pertinent information that would give the game away or make it too obvious. Then the other person gets to ask some follow-up questions that have yes or no answers to try and decide and to just decipher what you can use mine. What <laughs> the back of the box? What that game is? That's the back of the back. back the back of the backs. <laughs> it's so late. It's the back. It's of the so backs. late. The back box challenges. That's what we're gonna do right now, and that's the back box challenge. I don't know who should go first. Uh, I think I read for, I don't know. I'll read, whatever. All right. I like mine. You like mine. I like mine, too. I've got two, and one of them two? is way so obvious that I'll probably just read it aloud just for nostalgia's sake, and then I'll read the actual game, the other game. All right. Blank is back with a new sidekick. Jack. Blank. Daxter. In a crazy island adventure. Challenged by the crazed tribe of Blank... They is this a side scrolling game? Yes. Does it star somebody named Joe? No. Dang it. Joe and Mac. Oh. No. Well, um, they would have already been sidekicks. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Island Adventure new Challenged sidekick. by the crazed tribe of blank, they endeavor to get back their stolen blank. Armed with lightning quick moves, blank and awesome aerial acrobatics. Our duo is ready to face Did their Did you blank out a, a move of his? Uh basically. Okay. Um, our duo is ready to face their cunning adversaries with the help of blanks, quirky blank and his <laughs> blanks. Oh my God. They squabble and scamper their way through an unending blank mayhem. I don't even remember what I, did I ask if this was side scrolling? Is that what I it asked? It is. Okay. You did. And it is. And it's a sequel, right? I assume it might not be number two. In it's the not, series. it's not the first of this IP. Okay. Is this a 16-bit game? Yes. Okay. Is that a console exclusive? Yes. Oh. Nintendo? Yes. So it's a Super Nintendo exclusive. Is it a first-party game? Is it a Nintendo game? Yes. Wow. All right. What side-scrolling island-romping adventures <laughs> are there with sidekicks whose moves you would need to bleep out? Oh. My hair. oh. Do you play as a dinosaur? No. Dang it. That would have been way too easy. I didn't know if he was really on a tropical island or not. Did you say tropical island or did I make that up? I said island. Is this series still alive today? Did any games come out for this series within like the last three years? I believe so. Yeah, last three years. Yeah. Oh, 
Do you play as a big old monkey who lives in New Donk City? I don't know if he lives in New Donk City. I, su- I assume he's the mayor of it. <laughs> oh! Do you play as Don- is Donkey Kong I in this game? I never even put those that together. Seriously? I just thought it was a funny name. No, he's the mayor. I think it's canon that he's the mayor of New Donk City. <laughs> I never. It just sounded yes, so cool. Do. I just like the name. It just sounded like a funny, crazy Mario. Okay, well, let's call it New Donk City. Okay, so is this the third in the series? No. Is it the second? No. Oh, it's the first one. <laughs> it's it's. Is it Donkey Kong Country? Yes, it is. Wow, <laughs> I never related Donk City to Donkey Kong, and even when I started thinking about, it, I'm like, why? Why would you assume like, Donkey so Kong is the mayor of New right? Donk? Uh, oh, of New Donk. Uh, uh, yeah, I never put two and two together there. All right, good job. Why is it two and two? Is it just because two and two? Why is it not is it one and one? One and one? I don't know. Yeah, one and one. One plus one is easier. I mean, I mean, not really easier. I mean, it's easier. Never mind. I'm going to read this one to you because I would love to do this. No, you know what? Yeah, this doesn't count. I just want to read it for nostalgia's sake. What are you supposed to do with seven simple pieces of pipe and eight weird ones? Pipe dream? Yes. <laughs> So I love that game. I I would love. I, pipe so is that what it like, is? Oh, that is what it is. You've got pieces of yeah, pipe over to, here and it starts to make the white flow go. To, yeah. Oh, that game was so. That cool. game and Marble Madness. Marble Madness was amazing. Oh. And Snake Rattle and Roll, which you stumped me on. I did. Well, I mean, eventually you got there once I like told you <laughs> there's a rattle and a roll in it or something. <laughs> I said. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now I don't remember what I said. But you said, you said, <laughs> you said, is it a reptile? And I said, yes, or something. And then you're like, is it a frog or something? No, you did something stupid. You texted me it. Oh, well, first of all, I said, I was trying to guess what you played as. I said, do you play as a, uh, well, I didn't say snake, a frog? No. Uh, a lizard? No. Liguin? <laughs> yeah, that's what it was, Liguin. <laughs> but then later. Like, what? I started naming more, and I think you said you were close when you said reptile. <coughs> and then I said fish. <laughs> oh, God. That was fun. We're talking about episode 75 live stream. Uh, Go back and watch it if you haven't already. Those are a good time. All right, good ready? times were had by all. I'm ready. Kidnapped, the headline scream. Okay. Go ahead. I'm just. The nation is paralyzed in shock. Is it possible the president kidnapped? I didn't know that was the story of this game. Without a moment's hesitation, <clears throat> you know who's responsible. The dragon ninja. <laughs> this is Wrath of the Black Manta. No. Oh. <laughs> I keep thinking to go look up that game, but it's one of those that I think we always kind of default to. As blank or blank, also known as blank, you this take to dragon. the streets to rescue yeah. the president. But the dragon ninja is ready for you. So is that one person or is that like... A clan. Is ninja... Can ninja... Like fish? Yeah. I think it... Or ninjas. I think you can go both ways. I don't know. He's ready for you. <laughs> or she. He sends waves... <laughs> sends wave after wave of relentless ninjas. Vicious dogs and enemies to stop you. Armed with knives, shurikens, and nunchucks. They say nunchucks. It's nunchucks. Nunchaku. <clears throat> you must fight tooth and nail in alleys, on waterways, even on moving semi trucks. In the end, if you're blank enough, you take on the dragon ninja himself. You must defeat him and snatch the president from the helicopter that's about to whisk him away to who knows where. <laughs> to who knows where? It'll take every skill you've ever mastered and a few new ones to be blank. This is an 8 bit game. Yes. Obviously. I mean, there's only a few. It's probably going to be some obscure obscure game that I'm not going to remember. You definitely remember this game. I'll Is say it that. Tecmo? Uh, no. So it's not Ninja Gaiden. That was Tecmo? Pretty sure. Wow. No, you're right, because now it's Koei Tecmo, which Team Ninja is a part of. Yep. Yeah. Good job on you. Um, it's not Wrath of the Black Manta. That game was good. Do you play as a ninja? No. Oh, okay. You just, you just fight, fight the dragon ninja. Okay. But it's not double dragon. Is it? But is it a beat 'em up? Yes. Do you mainly use fists, or do you mainly? I know you can use knives and da da da. But you I mean, mainly you mainly use fists and feet. Yeah. 
Is it Mighty Final Fight? Mm-mm. Okay. Is it a, I mean, is it a Capcom game? No. Is it Konami? No. Should I just stop trying yes. to figure it out? Okay. Um, Although I think if you got, you might remember it. If you got the developer, you might, it might be like, oh, blank. Oh, I just got an injury. <laughs> <laughs> is this, was there more than one game in the series? Oh, uh, I don't think so, but I'll try to look it up. Uh, I mean, if I, you would, then I would assume, no. yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Did we own this game? No. Did we rent it? Yes. That is correct. That is correct. Um. <sighs> I don't know how this isn't Double Dragon. You play as blank and blank, otherwise known as the blank. You fight a guy named the dragon. (laughs) You beat him up with knives and weapons. I don't know that you can use knives and weapons. I don't know. I thought it said armed with knives and didn't it say something like that? that, Was that you or them? Oh, yeah, that might have been them. Yeah, that's them. Uh, But I don't think that matters. Do you... Are all the characters really big-headed? No. no. Oh my gosh, what is that game? River City Ransom. No. It's not that kind of art style. I'm trying to think of other Nintendo... I'll unblank the names, although I don't think Do this will help humans? you at all. Do you play as humans? Yes. I don't okay. think this will help you at all. Did you think it was Battletoads or something? I don't know if it was some weird... I didn't know it could be Battletoads or Ninja Turtles or something. Blade and Striker. Or the people you play as? <laughs> didn't help? Okay. <laughs> is it a side-scroller? Yes. Hmm. Would this game be remembered fondly by us? Or would we probably not even remember what to think? Oh, uh, I I think it would re- be remembered fine. It's not a I don't I wouldn't think of it as Did we probably game. not rent it more than once? No, I think we rented this more than once. Really? I'll give <sighs> you a hint. The name of the game is very late 80s early 90s. Is it Two crude dudes. You're close. <laughs> Two bad dudes. Two bad guys. No numbers. Bad dudes. I was just making that up. Wasn't you don't there remember a game, bad dudes? Wasn't there a game called Two Crude Dudes? Two Crude dudes. dudes was something, but you don't remember bad dudes? I don't think. I mean, maybe oh if I saw gosh. it. Oh, my gosh. Wait, who, so who made it? Data presented oh, by. Presented by Data. I never would, even if I got Data East. You don't remember bad dudes? It kind of... Let me see. It's called Bad Does Dudes. Does it have screenshots? Yeah. I mean, I stumbled into that one. Two crude <laughs> dudes, two bad dudes. I'm like, ah, <laughs> you got it. I mean, it's just... It's... Maybe you don't... This is kind of like how you remember Rockin' Cats, and I don't really remember it that much. I remember us playing Bad Dudes. Now, maybe... Actually, I wonder if it was in the arcade. I mean, it kind of looks familiar, but it also just looks like any other Nintendo game. It almost looks like a Game Boy game. I mean, everything is There's black not much and white colors, and green yeah. And Presented by Data, Data East. East. Bad Dudes. Blade I thought you would have remembered Bad Dudes. I mean, it's the box art looks more familiar than yeah. the game does, but... Bad Dudes. Definitely uh, did not own it. That I got right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we were ever privileged to have a Bad Dudes 2. I, <laughs> or a 2 Bad Dudes. <laughs> 2. And they're crude this time, oh, too. Oh, God. That's it for episode 79 of the Two Player Co-op Podcast. Thank you guys so much for being here. We really do appreciate it. You know you can find us? I meant, you know where you can find us? I'm tired. <laughs> Did you know you can find us? It's so late. Check us out at nerd901.com because we are part of the Nerd901 family. Go to nerd901.com for all things nerdy in Memphis and around the globe. Also, check out our buddies, <laughs> Eric and Durney. No, Derek and Ernie of the Pixels and Papers podcast. They specialize in RPGs, tabletop games. Check them out. Great podcasts. They're doing great things over there. Obviously, you can find us on Twitter. I'm at Kevin White 24. He's at Real Sean White. Together, we're at two player underscore co op. If you're watching us, hopefully you're watching us either at nerd91.com or youtube.com slash two player co op. If you're not, I don't. I would love to know where you're watching us. But if you're not there, go to youtube.com slash two player co-op. Hit the like button if you like what you see. Hit the subscribe button down. I messed up the arrows. Just to hit the subscribe button. It'd mean a lot to us. And the like means a lot to us as well. 
if you do like audio, Sean, do you like audio? I hey, it's not bad. It's okay. If you like audio and you don't like video, that's fine. We're all we we we're on podcast services around the globe, including iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and like I said, other services around the globe. All all around the globe. We also have a Facebook page, Facebook.com slash two player go up gaming. We never update it. It's just kind of a running we joke. We still get random likes. We got a though. new like this week. Yeah. Appreciate you. Uh was it Derek? I don't remember who No, it was somebody I don't know. He's sub he's a YouTube sub. Yeah. I can't remember who, but But it wasn't new Derek. No, I don't mean Ernie and Derek Derek. Oh. It might have been New Derek. I can't remember if it's New Derek. Is that is his name New Derek? No, I just I'm just like <laughs> not. I can't remember. It's like Bam House or something. Sorry, Derek. I can't remember what your last Bamford. name is. Bamford. Yes. No, it's not. Not him. Bam House. Okay. <laughs> Bam House. That would have been a good game. Oh, bad dudes. <laughs> they take down the Bam House. I'm tired. Thank you guys so much for being there here. This has been episode 79. And until the next time, Sean, just go ahead and take us out. Where's your thing? Where's your fireball? Oh, okay. Take us out. Thank you for playing. (laughs) Hit the camera. Couldn't see it on video, but he did good. Bye, guys.